once again good morning children so uh, now it's the time for our english language lesson so the topic that we are going to cover today is uh, participles and gerunds okay this is another important topic of your english grammar and uh, this is quite a vast topic but we'll try to study it quite simply okay and uh, basically uh, participles and gerunds help us uh, build sentences and uh, you know accommodate a lot of information without any complexity okay so we will be studying about participles first okay so uh, what are participles participles are basically uh, you know the uh, form of verbs and uh, the the form by form of verbs we mean there is a base form children okay there is a base form of verb like uh, for example love okay then uh, there comes an s form of verb which basically means when we add s it becomes loves okay so now uh, we have the past form of verb that is loved okay so then we come to the participle form of verb which has two types present participle and past participle okay so participles are basically of two types so over here we have participles present participle and past participle so there are two types of participles let's study about them so first we have the present participles okay so if we study the example examples of the ing form of verbs being used as adjective okay so what they are trying to say is when the ing form of verbs verbs with the ing as the suffix are used as adjective in a sentence okay the setting sun okay so we have the verb set plus ing so the verb set is here and plus the suffix ing gives us the word setting being used as an adjective it is basically the setting is qualifying the sun modifying the sun giving us information about the sun so it is acting as an adjective so this is a present participle okay setting qualifies the noun sun amazing qualifies the noun facts okay this book contains some amazing facts so the word amazing is derived out of the base form of verb amaze along with the suffix ing and this together acting as an adjective is now a present participle such adjectives formed from the base verb with the help of the suffix ing are usually called present participles okay children now however so now we always have some conditions children these conditions have to be kept in mind so what is the condition number 1 however the meaning of an ing adjective may be different from the usual meaning of the verb from which it has been formed like in these are a few examples wherein they are trying to say the base form of the verb has a different meaning whereas when it is in the ing form then it is having a different meaning okay fetching clothes so when we say fetching clothes the word fetching means very attractive okay so these clothes are really fetching are really attractive okay but the word the base verb fetch what is the meaning of fetch fetch means to go and get something so it is two different words right it is not like the previous case of examples that we studied set the sun does set right so uh, the sun sets in the evening so so set is being turned into the suffix ing setting so both have the same meaning right but this is not the case in sometimes when we add ing then it is a totally different meaning revolting smell okay revolting smell means very unpleasant disgusting smell okay so when we use the word revolt revolt means a violent uh, action okay so they have different meanings then we have haunting music by haunting music means that it has 
played an impression on your mind and it's unforgettable okay whereas the word haunt means that particularly uh, in the case of a ghostly or a, a spiritual encounter right so that is the meaning of haunt and basically haunting has a totally different meaning okay this is an exception in the case of an ing adjective second exception second condition some ing adjectives are used in spoken english only to express disapproval annoyance anger so these are a few examples wherein you know uh, some kind of disapproval has to be conveyed anger has to be you know expressed blooming mistake now children if you study the word bloom the word bloom means to grow right but when an expression of anger has to be you know portrayed then probably blooming mistake is trying to express anger by blooming means condemning mistake terrible mistake okay raving lunatic okay now children raving in the case of uh, in this uh, in this phrase basically means total total crazy person lunatic means crazy person so total crazy person but the word rave means to speak good about someone to sit down and talk at length about someone in praise of someone okay that's such a uh, contradicting meaning right children next blithering idiot okay now by word the blithering over here means complete okay and to blither to blither means to speak at length at you know have a long conversation and over here blithering idiot means a complete an absolute idiot okay so over here the words are basically being used the ing words are specifically used to express some kind of disapproval or anger okay they are not sticking to their usual meaning they are they have to convey some other message of annoyance okay then find out from a dictionary what the word now we've already known the word meaning of bloom rave and blither this is condition 2 then many ing adjectives do not have any corresponding verbs because they have been formed from verbs plus a prefix what do we mean by that i'll just take you back the slides children okay now over here we know setting setting has been formed from the corresponding verb set right so some of them don't have a corresponding verb in fact they have a verb along with that they have to add a prefix this is what they are telling us in the third exception outstanding do you think that uh, uh, you know outstand is a corresponding verb it is a verb outstand no it is not a verb right so basically out is the prefix used stand is the verb used and ing has been attached to give us a whole new word outstanding which means exceptionally good or remarkable this is an exception in the case of uh, you know ing verbs which are present participle ongoing project another example another similar example forthcoming event in both of them you have a verb along with that you have a prefix and ing to give us a new word so there is no corresponding verb there is no verb as such as on go there is no verb on go in which we've added ing there is a verb go and a prefix has been attached i hope it's clear children when a corresponding verb a base form of verb is added with ing and is used as an adjective it is a present participle but these are some exceptional conditions okay some adjectives ending in ing do not have any corresponding verbs okay so in the previous example we saw there is a verb which is added with a prefix sometime there is no verb at all which are the examples cunning animal do you think that you know a uh, cunning animal basically means selfishly clever or crafty but is there any word as cunt no we don't have any wor word in our dictionary then balding man becoming bald okay going bald but there is no bald as such then we have appetizing food so appetize is no word as such right so now in these examples we see that uh, uh, the sometime there is no related verb verb we are specifically talking about verb over here 
okay children so when there is no corresponding verb or uh, you know they can be a noun but they cannot be a verb then probably in that case we are we dealing with the exceptions of ing adjectives so now since we have talk, spoken about so many exceptions there is a little bit of confusion right children therefore to avoid confusion they are not called as present participle we call them as ing adjective why let's see why therefore to avoid confusion some grammarians use the name ing adjective to refer to all the adjectives ending in ing okay it can be a present participle it can be with a corresponding verb it can be without a corresponding verb uh, okay all those are exceptions included such adjective may be present participles or they may be related to verbs or they may be not be having any corresponding verbs at all okay i hope present participle is clear to you children right now there is one more role of present participle remember that the ing form of verb is also used to form continuous tenses okay so there are various uses the two uses which we are going to study is first as an adjective which we just studied ing uh, a verb which is being used as an adjective now the second role of present participle is when it is used in the continuous tense okay it is used to help and frame continuous tense sentences however in such cases helping words have to be used now what kind of helping words i'll just help you he is running okay so over here the present participle running along with the helping verb is is basically giving us a continuous tense sentence what is a continuous tense okay so by in present continuous tense is basically an action has started and is still continuing to take place okay it is started and still continuing to take place will continue to take place in the future it has it had started and is cont has continued to take place in the future so basically future continuous tense present continuous tense and past continuous tense okay he is running he was running he will be running she is singing she was singing she will be singing so basically now out of all these slides we understand that present participle is a form of ing adjective along with all those exceptions included right they are called as ing adjectives because there are exceptions in it and they have two uses as an adjective and to form tenses continuous tense sentences thank you children